Hello, in this lecture we will move on to chapter 6 and we will be working through the problem in chapter 6. We're going to be moving away from Larry Landscaping and to Wild Water Sports. So we're going to be selling speedboats in this case. I'm going to scroll down. You can read the scenario here. We're going to scroll down to the first beige box in this lecture. We're going to take a look at the create a new company file. So we're going to start QuickBooks, close any previously created uh, companies, and then we're going to click new company from the file tab. The QuickBooks start window appears. And then we're going to click the detailed start button. And then we're going to type the information on page, on figure 61. Click next. And we're going to go through this process. When we open up QuickBooks, we'll get a screen like this. You, or you may open up to another company. In any case, you should have the file tab up top. And so we're going to select the file tab. And in this case, we're going to create a new company. So many times when you work for another company, then obviously you would not be creating a new company. You would be working on their company. And, of course, if we were to start up a new company, then we would have to set up the new file in QuickBooks. In some ways, setting up the file is one of the most complicated areas. Once the file is up and running, if set up well, then it becomes fairly easy to do the day-to-day -day transactions. Once this opens up, we're not going to do the express setup in this case. We're going to do the advanced setup. Also want to point out that if you're using the demo version, it's possible that you, your screen may look a little bit different because the, uh, the screens set up in the past have been formatted to look like a certain way like prior versions basically of QuickBooks and you can set that up I am not using a demo version in 2014 so the look of the screen could be a little different once we go through this setup process so we're going to select the advanced setup and we get the screen like this and we're going to then enter the information that is on page 92 right here we're just going to enter that exactly as is I know it's very small in the book, so you're going to have to use the magnifying glass and get it in there. So let's take a look at that. So here's the information entered. Notice when you are creating a company, the ones with the star is our, our required field. We're going to be Wild Water Sports, Wild Water Incorporated. Tax ID generally starts with a 99. Anytime we deal with the IRS, we, we will need that. Address here, phone number, and we can then move forward with the next button. Scrolling back up to the previous page and going to number six, it says now we got the down the drop down list and select the retail shop or online commerce. So we're going to go back over here. We have our list retail shop online commerce. So we will need to use the scroll down over here and you're looking for these, this item retail shop and online commerce. Then we can select the next button once again. Number eight says that we will be a corporation. So we're going to go back over here and notice sole proprietor if we are on our own LLC and corporation S corporation nonprofit. We're going to be a normal corporation in this case and go next. Next item over here. We're going to scroll down back down to this page. Select January in the my fiscal year and select next. So that's the default in January. It's really kind of deceiving because you would think they would put the end year in the fiscal year. But no, we're putting the starting uh, month in the fiscal year being January so that would be the traditional fiscal year select next and then we're going to scroll down do not enter the password so we're going to try to not enter a password so that we don't have to remember the password in practice of course entering a password probably a good idea number 11 click the drop down arrow to save in the text box to specify where you want your data saved note that this example the file was saved in the folder called QuickBooks account as shown here so we will skip the password. I'm not going to enter a password. Create your company file and generally your QuickBooks information is stored in the file called the company file. Click next to choose the file name and location. So I'm going to select next in this case. Then it will browse our computer. So it's looking for our in our computer again. Where are we going to set it up? I'm going to go back to the desktop, back to that file that we set up. I'm going to go into QuickBooks. And note that I'm not going to make another folder to, to put the information in. Uh, that we will be turning in in week two, I'm going to put this straight into our data files. You're not going to be turning in these QuickBooks files. You will be turning in reports that you generate from the QuickBooks file. If you put the QuickBooks file into a folder that you're going to upload, it's going to be too much information. So I'm just going to put it into the data files. I'm going to have all the data files here. We're going to create multiple data files from this point forward. So then we can hit save and it'll take a little bit of time to save this. So now the file is saved and we're going to keep on going forward. Notice the background of this file. You can see the ribbon looks a little bit different in this version because I'm using the, the 2014 version. If you're using the demo version, I'm not sure if they were able to keep the formatting the same as in the prior files that they basically uh, set up on it. So it's going to look a little bit different if you opened 2014 out of the package 
here and this is what it'll basically look at the functionality will be much the same so I'm gonna scroll forward we're gonna go to number 12 when easy interview returns click next and select both service and products while water will be selling uh, service both and then click next to move to the next window so we're gonna select next once again and we're gonna do both services and products we're gonna sell boats and we're also gonna do maintenance on boats so then we're gonna select next and uh, most of these will be the default but again we want to go through these very specifically and check everyone to be yes or no we're not always gonna choose the default so select record each sale individually so we're gonna go over here and uh, record each sale individually and go next and then we we need to check all of these because the inventory will probably change at least so we're gonna go back over here and it says select yes if asked to to is if asked if you charge sales tax do we charge sales tax yes that's the default and uh, then it says select no when asked if you want to create estimates and then next no we don't want to create ex estimates then we're gonna go back over here and it says uh, number 16 select yes if you want to track sales orders before invoice customers and we're gonna say do you want to track uh, use billing statements in QuickBooks 17 select select no when asked if you want to use billing statements so I'm gonna go through this very carefully and I'm gonna point out the ones that are not the default and you can go through the rest of these on your when you get down to number 20 it says select yes when asked if you want to track inventory and then click next make sure you do that because that has a big effect on uh, the tracking of the inventory so do you want to track inventory yes we do next the same thing is true for 21 select yes when asked if you want to track time that's not the default we're gonna go back over here when it says do you want to, to track time yes we need to change that one 22 says select yes when asked if you have employees ch uh, check uh, we have w2 employees and then select next so we're gonna say yes we have employees W-2 employees. It doesn't ask us about 1099s. Those are contractors. You can check or uncheck. We'll probably just leave it unchecked and select it next. And then click next to set up your chart of accounts. Select uh, use today's date uh, or first day of the quarter or month and then click the calendar icon 1115 to start the and then click next. All right. So we're going to say using account. We'll select next. And then we're going to say uh, the date you select will be your start date. It says 1-1 one, one right here. Uh, they selected uh, use, the, use today's date. No, we're going to keep it at the 1-1-1-5. Uh, one, 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 and no, they actually changed this date to 1-1-1-5 uh, one, 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 because they had uh, 2014 up here. So you could basically do either way. If you, if you do choose this date, you can choose this and take it back to January. That's going to be the first day that we will start this so in this case in the new software it will be uh, the same date all right so then we have our chart of accounts here so we're going to scroll down number 25 click next to continue to accept given income and expenses and then click go to setup so we're going to go here and these are the chart of accounts that they gave to us the ones that are checked off we have merchandise income discounts we're going to accept that they came up with this chart of account based on the type of company that we are selecting so it says congratulations and we are basically set up through the setup process. So the easy interview is good and we can go to the go setup. All right, so we're just gonna continue through this again. Application certificate, I'm just gonna say continue and done. And then we should have our company set up here. We've get this pop-up window that is the first thing that will pop up for the most part. Now note when this pops up, you could, you could drag the window here and we're gonna just click down here to start working. So we're gonna go to start working. You may get some other uh, pop-ups trying to sell you types of inventory, um, like payroll service and types of things and checks and types of things that QuickBooks, such as this, QuickBooks payroll. We're not gonna set up the payroll. There's multiple different types of payroll accounts that uh, you could set up with QuickBooks. If this pops up on you, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this for now. We will be working with payroll and we'll talk about that more later. So if you get an, a, a pop-up that says account center, go ahead and close that. If you get a quick start center, go ahead and close that and uh, collapse the My Shortcuts pane. And then number 31, close What's New button by clicking the X uh, next to What's New. So all those pop-ups pop are designed to uh, help you supplement products and or help you get to know the software. We're gonna skip through that. You can then pause and read through the scenario. We're going to move to page 95 and go to the next page box, which has the objective to set up preferences. 
So then we're going to click the edit menu and click preferences. We're going to scroll to the top of the preferences list and click accounting. So we're going to go back here. I'm even going to close the home tab and we're going to go to the uh, edit here and scroll down to preferences. And then we'll scroll up to the top of the, of the graph and we will see accounting up top in the preferences. And number three says click the company preferences tab, then check uh, require accounts if it is not already checked. So we're going to go to the uh, preferences my company tab. Uh, require accounts is already checked. So we are okay there. And then click the company preference requires if it's not also make the use account numbers checkbox unchecked. So we're going to go back up here. It's unchecked already. Most companies, I, I would recommend using account numbers like later, but it does take some time to set up the account numbers. If you don't, then it'll be in order of assets, liability, owners, equity, income, and expense, and then in, in order by alphabetical order, which can be confusing because it'll change the order when you add new accounts. All right, and then use uncheck the two date warnings checkboxes. So we have the uh, date warning checkboxes down here. These are usually handy features to have, but when we're working in a practice problem, we will not be working in real time. So we do not want these pop-up warnings to be coming up all the time because we're entering old or new data. In real life, of course, entering real data, that would be a very handy feature to have. So click checking from the preferences list and click yes. Uh, yes asked whether you want to go there so we're going to go to the checking over here on this side so we are moving down to checking i'm going to select that it's going to say do you want to save changes to the prior area we're going to say yeah we want to save the changes we have made we are now in the checking preferences box and it says and da -da, number five click the my preferences tab so we're going back to the my preferences tab then check all boxes specifying default accounts to be used for different processes select add new drop down text as shown in figure six five so we're going to go back here we're going to go to my preferences and we're going to select open when right checks and we're selecting all of these accounts and then we're going to add a new account that being i think the check-in account in that section so we're going to scroll down and when we add new on page 96 we're going to type in there bank of florida so we're going to add new accounts that account being our bank account the bank account being the bank of florida so we'll hit the drop down we'll say add new we'll get this account now the account type is the bank account that's the default it showed up already we'll enter this information it's going to be the bank of florida and that's basically all the information that we have so far Let's go back to the book before we close it up though. So we look like this. We have this information in there.